called Rivers, and uh, to have come from LA, that was that's a big deal, and we really, really appreciate it. <clears throat> now I thought we were going to have another uh, person, Rob, uh, Robbie Gaynor, but I guess he's not here. Um, I've also asked uh, Mike Bickford if he would like to say a few words because Mike was a friend. So, uh, Mike. Thank you, Audrey. Nice to see everybody tonight. We enjoy having the uh, uh, historical, historical society here, here with us. In the here with us at the Miracle Springs Resort. It's always a fun evening. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I knew Paul Gregory, but I was just saying to Jim, I never realized when I met him or got to know him. He was, uh, I had a number of friends and then came to the hotel next door. He'd have breakfast or he'd have lunch. Uh, you know, over time I would, you know, meet him and talk to him. There was really kind of no time. There was a formal introduction. I really oh, uh, and somebody had said, well, he was in the theater business, and um, I have enough trouble following uh, uh, bartenders and dishwashers, so I'm really not capable of following what's going on in uh, uh, acting and uh, Broadway. But you know, I knew he uh, uh, was known to people in the film business and in the. Uh, theater business, but, you know, I sort of shared a camaraderie of mutual suffering uh, because he had had apparently a restaurant in L.A. and a restaurant in New York City. So we shared war stories about just the thrills and the joy of the restaurant business and how exciting it could be. <laughs> so we, we had quite a good time swapping stories about the different calamities we faced and, you know, how this blew up and that blew up and can you believe this? So, uh, there was a lot of simpatico between us. But, uh, so, uh, we, we were always uh, happy to have him uh, dining with us and sometimes staying with us. But, uh, uh, and the service, all of the staff really enjoyed him. They all, and he was very kind to all of them and they all knew him by name. They all sort of were happy to be the server, to serve them for lunch or dinner. He'd have his two martinis and get in an even better mood. <laughs> so, but, uh, so, you know, I would sit down and say, hey, how are you? How's it going? I wouldn't spend a lot of time with him, but we'd, we'd spend a few moments in chatting. But, uh, a cousin of mine came from England, Seth Sinclair. We were having breakfast at the cafe next door. I said, oh, that guy over there is Paul Gregory. He made a film, uh, Heat of the Night. And uh, my uh, cousin Seth said, what? Is that Paul Gregory? I was like, well, yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, he said, oh, he made one of the scariest movies ever made. And my cousin Seth had been uh, in theater and, and in uh, video production, that type of thing. So he was like, oh my god, I don't know what's going on here for And he's like, what? You know, like he was just hesitant to barge in on such a great guy. But uh, I just dragged him right over to the table, plopped him down. So we sat and chatted with Paul for a half an hour. And he was, we of course had to take the selfies and the pictures. And, but, it, but we really had a really enjoyable time. I think Paul enjoyed that my cousin was, you know, so so taken with him, and so taken, he did discuss the movie and what a great production the movie was. But that was an interesting event. Something else Paul mentioned to me, which I thought was kind of surprising, he said, somebody banged on my door this morning, and uh, I opened the door, some guy was standing there with a, um, a laptop, and he had a camera on him. He said he was from Georgia, from some film school or something there, and uh, he wanted me to interview and talk to him. I think Paul still had a robe on, probably disheveled, but uh, the guy had sort of hunted him down and did a, uh, uh, 
FaceTime or Skype interview with him with the class he had in Georgia. So somebody was very interested and he mentioned that to me like, can you believe it? Somebody showed up at the front door. But I like to echo what Jim said is that, that he was a very humble, very salt of the earth kind of guy. And we loved him. He was a great friend to the hotel and to the staff. So but we miss him. Thank you very much. Um, is Bruce Chessier here? He sure is. Would you like to say anything, Bruce? Do you do Paul? I know, I, I know I'm putting this on you, but uh, uh, you don't have to, but if you would like to. Um, I'm not prepared for this at all, actually. It's all right. Sorry, I got a little late. We, 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 don't, we, we don't care. Okay, I'll give it back. Uh, I, I, I actually got to know Paul a little bit when uh, he was living when he was living in, in Ranch and Mirage, uh, and um, was, was the uh, owner of an art gallery. Uh, remember her name? I can't remember her name right now. Kay Oberfeld. Kay Oberfeld, right? And he hated it down there. <laughs> you know, Kay was very social and. and uh, uh, tried to drag Paul around to uh, a few of the society events down there, and, and uh, he much preferred being here at Mr. Hotspur. And uh, you know, he, he, he showed me around um, this place that he had uh, when, when, when Palm Springs was the, was the place that everybody was going to with the racket club, and, and he came up here. I mean, he was a true lover of the desert. And, uh, um, I think what you guys were saying says it all. He he was so real. Salt of the earth is a good way of putting it. Uh, he was not. He didn't have any of that Hollywood pretension or phoniness. And um, yeah, he he uh, he was a really really I think more of a man of the theater than he was of film. He hated Hollywood from, from what what he told me. And uh, he did some he did some work with. Uh, uh, in, in Broadway and in, in England, and, and uh, I wish I had known that I was going to talk here because I would have been better prepared to talk about some of the theater work that he did, but because that was his pride and joy. And, and of course, uh, uh, Night of the Hunter was was his, his big film, and, and, and I've actually uh, talked to a film historian who's going to give me some notes about him. And uh, I, I will be writing about him in a couple of weeks. So, um, you know, I'm so just glad you have given me a reason to write about him because, uh, you know, his passing was um, so quiet and no one wrote about him. Uh, it's one of those awkward moments, you know. And uh, I, I really felt bad about the fact that I didn't find out about it until about a month, six weeks after after it happened, so um, it, was, it was just like he didn't want any fanfare, so I said, okay, all right, we'll just go the way he wanted to go, and uh, didn't write anything about it, so, but, but now I'm going to, so thank you.
The Delta Hot Springs Historical Society is providing you with a chocolate colored commemorative oh. bookmark. on the back and uh, uh, you know, a little bit about him on the front. So we hope you will keep this bookmark, that you will actually use it, and it will remind you of Paul Gregory. And um, we thought that maybe this would be a way to help us all to remember him. So um, enjoy your chocolate dessert, and then top it off with one of our own Dot Reads Always yummy chocolate brownie. Um, and there will be a short, just a short break before we start our regular program, uh, which uh, we're looking forward to as well. So, thank you.